This is peak Overwatch. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, what you've all been waiting for. And now it's go time. Here we go. Bloody hands, my eyes wide. I got one chance. No sleep till I'm enhanced. Fight hard to keep my stance. Knuckle up, time to buckle up. I got one shot and I won't stop. One goal for the joy ride. I'm a champion. Move aside. What? Oh, okay. Are you kidding me? Take over the game. What am I watching? They might just be doing it. He's a god. He's a god. Yeah. Oh! What? Full force, I'm unleashed, so don't speak. Grandmaster, don't sleep. Victory, it tastes so sweet. Knuckle up, time to buckle up. I got one shot and I won't stop. One goal for the joy ride. I'm a champion. Move aside. Let's go. Welcome everyone to the Overwatch League June Joust Eastern Regional Knockouts presented by Xfinity. I'm Vicky Kitty and I'm here with the Jaws and we're going to be taking you through the action with our first two teams in the East. Of course, with our homestand heroes, the Hangzhou Spark versus the New York Excelsior. Oh yeah, the knockout time, here we go. Got two matches today. I'm excited, Vicky. We have the Spark against the NYXL as our first one and oh, Boy, has it been a good uh, good regular season for the June Joust. The games over the last couple of weeks, I think, have flipped a lot of things on their heads. The spark looks so good coming in today. We've seen really nice showings from the NYX, uh, NYXL as well. We've seen Guang Vong come in too, which has been very exciting. But I, I want to speak about the spark, man. This team is Oof. off the chain right now. They've only lost two maps. Two maps, Vicky, leading up to today. Yeah, they've been on a streak. Of course, when I saw the meta going into the June Joust, I honestly had a lot of faith into the Spark. And of course, they performed to no disappointment, Jaws. Oh, yes. They are not disappointing anybody currently. And there you go. You can kind of see how uh, both all, all the teams, not even just the NYXL or the Spark, got here today. Two and two is uh, NYXL's record. Spark, four and one. Dynasty three and one, Dragons three and one as well. So it's number one seed going up against number four. Obviously on paper, you'd be like, okay, so Spark are definitely going to win this. But NYXL haven't looked too bad either. Like their yeah. new DPS that they've brought in, people like Flora, Feather, and they've had them on kind of this uh, big rotation with Ivy and Guangbong. have looked very, very good. A very adaptable team, it seems, coming into this year. And you kind of need that, especially with these hero pools that are going to be thrown at teams uh, in these tournaments. You are, we were actually having this conversation earlier right before the broadcast where I was kind of gathering your thoughts on the meta. And after this weekend and what we had seen within the last two weeks unfold, the Winston and D.Va are, seem to be the strongest tank composition overall and seems to be more viable in the maps that we have within the map pool. Although we've seen these Orisa comps uh, look really strong in the Eastern region too. The name of the game in NA comps is to use Lucio to get into position, soft engage, instead of actually utilizing the tank mobility cooldowns, and then hard engage again with the coalescence, that coalescence being the key. Meanwhile, though, looking at the spark in the NYXL, we've seen a lot of Brigida and Ana, and, you know, we were talking about the difference between these two different support compositions and how it plays into the strength of these specific teams. Yeah, it does play a little bit slower because the Coalescence in general will charge a whole lot faster and the tempo mm -hmm. of the comps is a whole lot faster too just because Lucio is involved. Anytime a speed boost in any game, really, not even just Overwatch, even a time a speed boost is involved, uh, you're just running at them. That's all you're going to do. You just hit E, you sprint towards them, and then hopefully your Winston Diva end up just nuking somebody. Ideally, and what's been really interesting to see about the NA meta that's currently been cropping up, you force cooldowns from either the Reaper or the Moira. You force that Wraith mm -hmm. Form or you force the Fade. As soon as they are out of the DPS of the support, you run at them and you kill them as fast as you possibly can before those cooldowns come up again. Moira's Fade is probably one of the more, most powerful abilities in the games, just as a, a non-ultimate ability. It's a very short cooldown. It makes you invisible, gives you a speed boost, and it's it's basically a blink. You just dash mm -hmm. over to the other side of the map, the other side of the team fight here to, to safety, to your Lucio, to your, to your backline, wherever you really want to go. It's crazy. But as soon as you get that out, Moira is pretty vulnerable her only real way of healing herself is a right click unless her orb is off cooldown and you can kind of throw that out and heal yourself and it doesn't matter if those abilities are even available right vicky because echo is mm -hmm. in the meta right now <laughs> that beam focusing people down it's got its name focusing beam for a reason when they're below 50 percent hp will just 
blow up anybody. Yeah, and that's the difference, too, when you have the coalescence and then you have the Stormbeard to help disengage or keep the sustainability in the fight. Meanwhile, your Moira is building two coalescence in these fights, which have yeah, been uh, yeah. going I on mean... for a really long time. Yeah, right? It's like you you have – you whether you have the streams costing between both of the enemy – whether it be the enemy coalescence and then your team coalescence, getting it twice. So you got four coalescence in total in the fight. And then you got four diva bombs getting sent your way because of the double echo duplicate. It's just been super chaotic. Chaotic. And then you have the Brigida and Ana that we've seen a lot from both the Spark and the NYXL where the difference is these ultimates aren't charged up as quickly. Quickly, Currently, you have the home stand though, and I love the energy and the arena that we've been able to see, Jaws, throughout the weekend. That home stand power-up, I truly believe in it. The NYXL, they're not going to have that home stand power-up. Unfortunately, only one team is going to be able to qualify in the June Joust tournament, and one of these teams are going to have to bow their heads to the other. Yeah, I'd be pretty scared if I was the NYXL, especially as a spark. Like I mentioned, I've already dropped two maps, but here is the roster. I spoke a little bit about before. Flora and Feather, they end up rotating in and out with Guangbung and Ivy, depending on the situation. Normally, we're seeing on Junkertown or very long range mm -hmm. hit scan maps. We do see Ivy and Guangbong come in on the Widowmaker and then uh, a dive hero, normally something like a Genji. And that has been the case for the majority of the NYXL play time. Feather and Flora, they're starters though. Always seem to start. It doesn't really matter because control, more often than not, you're not going to find these long range engagements. Maybe ruins of all maps, but even then, a Widowmaker can be fairly difficult to play, especially if you're playing against a Winston and a Diva. Way better off playing the Echo and the Reaper, you can just jump to high ground with the rest of your tanks and just burn the Widowmaker down before she can even get a shot off. But uh, Spark, Vicky, this is the team the home crowd are waiting for. Look, you can see everybody lining up to get some pictures oh, as the Spark yogi. make their way onto the stage. They got a sick intro video as well. Oh, boy. And when we get this back here in North America or in Europe or whatever, oh, man, it's going to be fantastic to cast those events again. And the flags, too. I love the hype that these teams are bringing out. Everybody meeting them in the alley. And uh, just finding a way to give them that support. That's that crowd support again. And that's the power up that I'm worried about looking at the spark. But look, as they get ready, oh, they're feeling themselves. This is the confidence that I love to see from the spark. And they should be exerting that confidence because they've been doing so well within this stage. It's going to be a pretty long walkout, too. The Spark have a pretty big roster, <laughs> which is so <laughs> yeah, cool. At least all the fans get to see every single player as well. Of course, we just saw So Min Su there pass by. Godsby, one of the most famous players in Korea, formerly of X6. And what a legend he's been throughout his Overwatch career. He did start a lot of the time. Vicky, um, earlier on in the season, but we've seen a lot mm. more of Shy recently, which has been a massive buff to the Spark. You can see putting him in on the Echo, and just any hero really. The guy's just a beast. Yeah. It's been an incredible difference for the Spark, hence why they've gone so, so far in the Jude Joust, winning 12 maps, losing only two. What an incredible performance thus far. That is a fantastic walkout little dance there, very good. These intro videos are always fantastic coming from the Chinese teams. Yeah, it actually makes me so excited to uh, anticipate my first homestand. Keep reiterating that throughout the weekend, but I get it. As I see You'll this, I can't worry. really... Yeah, like, do you blame me? I mean, look how awesome this looks. Look at the arena, look at the colors. These players also just walking onto the stage, getting set up for the first series of the day. And today is going to be so important, too, with a lot of these matches, Joss, because this is the day to determine which of the top four teams are going to be competing in the June Joust. Oh, yeah. It's pretty nerve-wracking, I can imagine. But for a lot of the players they've played on stage before, it's not going to be too much of a sweat for them. You speak about the home stand buff. Oh boy, a spark gonna use that to its fullest advantage. Now they all just kind of line up the stays. They're ready to rock and roll. And this is a spark roster too that recently three owed the dragons. These, uh, this team is not to be scoffed at whatsoever. This is gonna be your starting lineup for today. Architect, the flex god, Shy, who's just been destroying everybody on the server on his Echo. Gooshway, a legendary mm -hmm. top tier main tank. Uh, and Gooshway has just been an unbelievable former, not only just this year, but previous years too. He played on the World Cup roster for Team China a couple of years ago, and he has just gone up and up and up, new strength and new strength every single time we see him. It's good to see Somin Su obviously back as well. He went a bit MIA last year, but 
finally back on a team that will do him well, I'm sure. I'm excited, man. Sparker, Sparker, a team definitely to watch out for. And I got a spark it. You see them getting set up too, just bringing the hype. Everyone's taking their seat, and our series is just about to begin. I like the way that they're bringing a lot of the momentum of their success within this month of going into this match, and that's why when I take a look at the Spark, this is a team that you definitely have to feel threatened by if you're playing against them. They just have been consistent, and I love how you brought up Shy because I feel like Shy has been that main anchor who's been popping off for the rest of Spark, allowing Spark to feel a lot more comfortable, essentially building that foundation that they needed. Yeah, he's really, really been the difference maker. And last time they actually met was in the main melee, which was a completely different meta, of course, as we didn't have the hero pools. And they only won one map against the MYXL. They went 3-1 in the end. And they played Godsby, and they hadn't been playing shy. This is the big turnaround that I've been saying. I love Godsby. I love watching him play, and a very historied player. But right now, Shy is outperforming him, and you can see the exact point where they started to play him because the spark was just going up and up. They did end up winning uh, Voskaya after a full hold, but I mean, right now this team's looking to just 3-0. It's going to be oh, Mister. We walk in there, we join the server, we click some heads, then we walk away with 3-0. That is what they're expecting, and I think that's what a lot of other people are expecting too, whether you're a fan, analyst, or whoever. Maybe the MYXL get a map here, but I think it's going to be a very, very tough battle for them. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Spark are one of those teams that I definitely have on my pick to make it out, and that's just because of their progress so far within this uh, this stage. The NYXL, although they didn't have a great start in the main melee, they seem to have started finding their footing, at least within the June Joust. They were able to beat the Valiant and the Fusion, which the Fusion uh, series that we had seen with the NYXL was uh, probably the most exciting one I've seen uh, between the NYXL and the way that they were able to make some of those adjustments really shine. Definitely. But they were, yeah, I mean, and, but they lost to the charge in the Soul Dynasty, um, you know, but that's a lot better compared to how they performed in the main melee where they just didn't do so high. I think they lost to every team except when they actually beat the Hanjo Spark, when the Hanjo Spark weren't looking so great themselves in the main melee. Yeah. And they made those adjustments and that's when we talk about Shy coming into the roster and actually making a difference for them this month. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit, Vicky, as we load into Oasis. How do they get here? Well, NYXL, they beat the Valiant and the Fusion, like you just said, but everybody's kind of expected to beat the Valiant, right? The Valiant only just picked up their second map of the season yeah. last <laughs> night. And they were playing also against the Fusion roster that was kind of weakened. They weren't playing EQO, which they found mad recent success on. And only having those two as wins, NYXL right now, definitely the underdog, like mm -hmm. hands down. The Spark, like I mentioned, I think they're just going to walk in here. Just uh, imagine they're just going to 3-0. It's up to the MYXL here to step up to that plate. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they do end up getting that 3-0. Just because of the consistency that we've seen within the Spark in comparison to the NYXL on paper, it just makes more sense. But the NYXL have been figuring things out, so we'll see how they do starting off the series here. Jaws, making sure we get that teleportation going forward and to get to the point first. Yes, indeed. Both teams did end up teleporting forward. A very different look here from the MYXL, running Jonak on the BAP and Friday too. So they're looking for just kind of anti-dive here. They do not want that Spark to get on top of them because that's, that's where the Spark really do shine. They've got so many good players on their perfect roles. Oh, not perfect roles, sorry. They're perfect heroes. They have Gushway on the Monkey. They have Shy on the Echo, but Nar's going to be on that Zarya. He actually gets oh. dominated first. And you can see how difficult it is to jump into the team, Vicky. Like, you're jumping into so many stuns, Immortality Field, and Feather 2, who's going to be sitting there shotgunning any large hitbox target in the face as soon as they try and jump on the back line. Yeah, and they have Jonak on the Baptiste too, who's already going to have window for this upcoming fight. Luckily, the NYXL take the point first. You can see the Spark trying to get an angle, but they're not trying to get too uh, ahead of themselves here. You can see them backing off a little bit, just trying to get that poke damage from Shy to get this duplicate that he's going to have online. Yeah, the funny name we've uh, kind of garnered this comp has been Duplicos. Oh. Yep, there is the a nano engage from Gushway. 
Yeah, and he gets pooped out of that situation. He's forced out of the choke point, but he comes right down with the bubble. Now the Diva Bomb coming in from Shy. That's the duplicate, and he still finds Bianca. That's big because Bernard actually demet them right in time to make sure that Bianca would get out of that fight. Doesn't make a difference for Bianca, though, because he would have been uh, dead anyways. And it's Architect popping off, finding the quick two. Floor not going to find anybody with the dead eye. And it's the Spark that have taken this point back from the NYXL. 32%, though, for the NYXL. Not too much extra credit. Yeah, the NYXL, though, can make it kind of a slow crawl to this mini, mini health pack room here. The only thing they're really going to fear is this Goose Ray Primal Rage. But there should be enough kind of stuns and knockbacks and everything else to stop him from really doing all that damage. Especially since you have the Brigida Rally 2 from Friday. Maybe just start this engagement. Get Pung with the Supercharger that may want to have some respect if you're the Spark. And uh, there's a Supercharger around the wall for protection. And the you have too. Architect, yeah, and the, de uh, the, the Death Blossom from Architect. He seems to find Feather in the side room, but Feather's gonna back off as he has that Wraith. He hadn't utilized it yet. It's Kushui taking so much damage, actually trying to jump right behind the NYXL, the Death Blossom from Architect. He gets stunned, and that's that problem when you're trying to go into this backline on the NYXL. You have to deal with Friday, who's now Nano. sleeping. But luckily, Bernard Architect find these two picks. The Nano Blitz from Architect is gonna be so lethal after using that Death Blossom. He gets out in time. He doesn't get hit by the Diva Bomb. Even though he got stunned right there, that's a threat. But luckily, Architect was able to to rotate th through those abilities, cooldowns perfectly to get right back to the team. Yeah, a couple little reflips there. NYXL took the point from the Spark, and the Spark quickly took the point back. They didn't give him too much time. We're looking at almost final fight territory here. Graviton Surge is online. Copy as well from Shy. No real defensive ult available for NYXL. Rally's no way really near there. Maybe they can create a space oh. with this window. And that's not the way you want to try to keep things here if you're trying to take Big the point. The grab, though, from Gushway. Oh, what a big follow-up. And the anti, like you said, Jaws. That's exactly why this is so threatening. And Shy has a duplicate. Is about to get the Diva Bomb. Going to buy some time here, considering the fact that no one's here to touch the point. Oh, Young Pung gets lasered down just before he can strike OT. And Vicky, I said the NYXL's comp right there. That was very hard to actually dive into. The Spark just managed to rotate their cooldowns yeah. just so effectively and were able to pace themselves too. They weren't just all on the gas all the time like a dive composition wants to do. They want to be able to nano Gushway to jump in. They want to be able to juggle Gushway in the front of the back line and make sure he um, is building up that ult charge with MCD. But they weren't just full in all the back line let's go let's just let's just punish their uh let's just punish their supports let's get some cooldowns out no they were they were very very cognizant of just how much damage the NYXL can do and how much lockdown they have as well oh there's oh. Gushway with the Goomstorm and look at this anti nade too straight on top of three of them and yeah Gushway finding the wow. last three ticks on three of them uh to find themselves a nice little quadra kill there and what was extra crazy in that play too was that immortality field had been already used to try to save uh, Yak Pung, and unfortunately, though, he, because he used it, he didn't have it for the grab. So that was absolutely crucial there. Trying to rotate through those cooldowns and forcing out that immortality field was the Goosh Way and Bernard follow up. Yak Pung now trying to fight for this high ground, though. Going on to round two, the NYXL need to do something, and this is exactly how you start that off. Finding IDK is big, but MCD has shut down Feather. NYXL still have more bodies here on the point with Goosh Way going down. I like this start here, and they do get the point first. Oh, is he going to make it? No, he is not. Goodbye. Yeah, it took Goodbye. way too much Goodbye. damage. As soon as you lose IDK there, I mean, you almost have, you either have to finish the fight in your favor very quickly or go for the reset. It's very difficult to, to rebound from that one. Luckily, MCD got the kill on Feather, but it didn't really matter. And now look at the old banks as well, Vicky. Friday has 63% on his rally. IDK is 30% behind. MCD's got that nano. He's ready to go for this engage. He's probably going to apply it to Gushway as Shy jumps in over the top as well. Or maybe actually it's just waiting for this duplicate too. The duplicate, so they go yeah. in with the nano and dupe the diva to try and force out some cooldowns and hopefully pick off either Jonak or Feather here. I'm curious to see what they're going to try to engage with. But meanwhile, Florida is trying to get on the back line. He doesn't have the death awesome, but still, he could get Wraith and just Wraith right out of that situation. He gets pooped out. They notice him. And it's Shy the duplicate and Gushway holding forward. You made note of what a strong player Gushway, Gushway is. Now, imagine when you have Shy duplicating the Diva, getting a Diva bomb and sending it forward into the NYXL. Shy, I just
just got a quick 3k there, actually, being able to follow up from Gushui. I love that play, and they were able to flip the point in their favor. Although the NYXL 55%, they do have some ultimates coming up online for this upcoming fight. Yeah, they are playing a little bit split to the NYXL. They want to have Yuck Pung kind of on the point to make sure it's not taken for free. And you saw Bianca on the high ground, kind of isolated on his own, in his own little world almost, but he has got a little bit of mobility so can rejoin the team, but it was just way too much with Shy transforming into a D.Va, basically turning into Dive Goats again with D.Va's oh, Harrier and the Winston. Oh. But here we go. Flora is slept on the high ground. Shy is just poking away. And Yuck Pun has already used his shift. Flora has been naded as well. I mean, this is a very bad start for the MYXL. They're going to have to play a little bit more passive here. Graviton search yeah, comes out. In fact, everything is being thrown at the MYXL. Oh, and that, that has the rally too from IDK to keep this engagement up. And not enough charge from Bernard, but enough to tickle. Feather goes down. and. The immortality field has been forced out. They're going to fancy floor and shut down floor to the a DPS attempt from the NYXL when Feather had that duplicate there, Jaws. Unfortunately, just got snubbed. When you have Gushui 2 getting a 2k, you highlighted Gushui and just he's had such a large impact for the spark. Yeah, Flora tried to make a, a solo hero play just then. You see him kind of diving to the back line and trying to catch Bernard unawares. Bernard already had his self-bubble available. He doesn't really need to use it in these uh, in these fights like straight away. He can rely on Gushui to build up a lot of that charge for him. So he's ready with Flora just diving in on him. I can just use Bubble as soon as you use that Death Blossom. I'll absorb all the damage and turn it into some oh, more no. of my own. Oh, you should have to use Immortality Field. There it is, the window too. But you can currently see the way that the Spark are Turn forcing them out of the line of sight. Yeah, they have to touch the point soon. We're already nearly at 95%, but there may not even be enough bodies. Jaws with Architect finding two. Architect gets stunned, but luckily he has IDK right there. MCD taking a lot of damage, but it's the NYXL that are just dropping like flies. They have to clean up Feather before they can fully take this map. And coming in is going to be Yakpon rolling in, but nobody else left to sustain it. Wow, what a map to start us off. The spark looking so clean on this comp. I want to mention as well how much pressure MCD and IDK were under. Zero. Zero yep. pressure whatsoever. They, I don't think they even got damaged, I feel, in the majority of this. If we had a damage taken stat, they'd probably be at the lowest. Like, there was nothing that was attacking them. They, they, uh, NYXL couldn't actually engage on top of them. And one of the reasons for that was because they were playing the Orisa. You can't just send Flora at the back. You can't just send the Diva as well. Your your comp relies on you kind of absorbing the pressure of Gushue and Banar and Shy, and then kind of springboarding back. You've got a lot of stuns, a lot of up close and personal damage. But if you can't springboard back, those springs may be a little bit rusty, need a little bit of oil, and you're just absorbing that, and then Gushue is running away with the game and Shy doing infinite damage and then transforming it to D.Va and destroying your backline. Like, they, 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 they just can't execute against uh, Spark the way they want to. They want to just be able to push back and punish Gooch Wave for so going so aggressive, but the Spark, they're playing at tempered. They're not just diving in, looking for these support kills. They know exactly what they need to do. They need to wait for the Nano, send Gooch Wave in. Shy follows as well, and then it's all over, Boogie. Yeah, their cooldown rotation is also impeccable. We noted that in the first round, and overall, I feel like the NYXL is playing a lot more split up than what we're seeing from the Spark. Obviously, though, the Spark aren't able to pick them off one by one. This is an important series here, Jaws. It's the regional knockouts for the Eastern Region for the whole day today. And only two teams from the Eastern Region are going to be able to proceed on to compete in the June Joust. Currently, the Spark, though, are up a game in the series. Don't go anywhere. We're going to throw to a quick break. And when we're back, we're, we're going to come back with some more June Joust knockout tournament action. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Indeed. We help people get jobs.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And by IBM, the official cloud and AI partner of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, everyone, to our first series here in the June Joust Regional Knockouts. We're looking at the Eastern Region. It's the NY Excel versus the Spark. The Spark, though, have been on a tear this month, Jaws, and they just took the first map in the super important series. Yeah, they've lost two maps, Vicky, leading up to today in the June Joust. Like, that is not a number to scoff at. The Spark are just dominating currently. And as we step into the next map, it being Temple of Anubis, I gotta think it's gonna go the same way. Uh, the NYXL not really coming up with the answers right now that the Spark are throwing out. So all the questions that the Spark are throwing at them, they can't find those answers. They need a cheat sheet. How do you do it, Vicky? Gushue is just so good and his ability to dive in with Shy is just, they're just so precise. And they're, they're also playing against an NYXL comp that kind of wants them to dive into you. I mentioned it on Oasis, but they kind of want to springboard back out. They want you to dive in, they burst damage you down or stun you and kind of lock you in place. And then bam, they do all this damage, your tank dies, and then they roll over with you from there with the Orisa just kind of helping the support just stay alive. But the problem is when Shy and Gushue get to your backline, Shy already has copy, Gushue receives nano, and there's nothing stopping them just running through your whole team, regardless of that immortality field or even just the Brigitte just existing. Mm. They're going to be on the offense first, that is the NYXL, and they're looking like they just want to run with this comp uh, over and over again. They are not running with this Kree this time, however. They're going to have Feather on that uh, on that Echo and Flora on the Reaper. So same kind of same kind of they, they want to play the same kind of way. Uh, Feather's just going to be here to duel out with Shy up in the sky. The only person he's going to have to rely on for heals though is going to be Friday. Jonak's not going to be able to hit too many of those air shots. So it, in essence, Shy is going to have a little bit more protection than Feather will because MCD is going to be able to just hit him in the air with that hit scan fire when you scope him with the armor. Right, and that's the trade-off you're going to have when Jonek has that immortality field. Shy, though, still putting on some pressure. I love the position that we're seeing from the Spark, but I even love better the punish that we're seeing from Feather onto Gushway. That's a big pick, and you already see the NYXL wasting absolutely no time. Feather needs to boot Shy off of his high ground. He has some help up there, and it's Jonek who's going to hold back a little bit. He has the window to help protect them. And they're going to just move in here for free. I mean, Shy's still on the high ground there. He's probably Someone just trying to, to wait. Touch. Yeah, and Architect right there. I mean, it's right there, too. Gushue is coming back. They That's what they wanted, but they didn't touch the time. Shy and Architect were right there. They actually just wanted to wait for Gushue to engage, but they took way too long. And now that Yakong has found Architect, this is going to put a dent to the NY, or rather, the Sparks plants, because now they're dropping like flies the NY except. Only lost both of their supports. I mean, that's pretty big, but still, the Sapon is right there, and they're going to be able to get right back to this next choke point. Yeah, although it was kind of a nice little fight there from Spark, just trying to get as much ult charge as possible, because now they're going to have to uh, beat out the MYXL. Yuck Pong's just going to walk forward, plant that supercharger down, and the rest of the team are probably going to be able to get ults online using that boosted damage. The saving grace, though, for the Spark, they got that combo up again, Vicky. They've got Copy and they have that Nano. So Yuck Pong, uh, sorry, uh, Gushue and Shike just diving on the back line and just disintegrate Friday and Jonah. Essentially, what we had saw, what we what we had seen rather um, in the last map, and that's very possible here, especially with the way that they've been able to follow up. Gujo is just going to get out of that situation, of course, waiting to just disengage with that ability. You see them funneling over to the side. That's some intel. He's getting ready and getting put into position. You have the nano boost that you may mention of, and the rally now from IDK. We're gonna see Flora teleport. He has the bubble on him too, just in case to protect him. He has a death blossom, and the spark know exactly what he wants. Look how spread out they're playing, but it doesn't matter. They grab Flora, isolate him, anti him. They make sure that he has a troublesome time. Architect goes down from that death blossom, but the supercharger from Shy after using that duplicate can help turn this fight in Spark's favor after losing Gushue. This is the opportunity now for the NYXL to try to take this point as quickly as possible. IDK's They're nearly there for the first point. IDK is gone and he's not in this fight and neither is Bernard. They're trading that for Feather here and Architect dies again. He couldn't even escape because you have Friday too busy shield bashing your face. You can see he's already about to round up to another rally. Jonah almost with another window. You're nearly right there here, Jaws, to try to take this whole point and look at this time bank. Three minutes and nearly 50 seconds. 
IDK has gone down, they're just trickling onto the point now. If Architect can get back and make use of his ult, they might be good, but it doesn't look likely. Oh, he gets oh one my, shot by Flora, again. and that will finish it off. Three minutes and 40, 42 seconds for the MYXL attacking that second point. Oh My word, the Spark just got kind of rolled over there. Their ideal plan, Vicky, in allowing Gushue to receive the Nano, they copy, they jump in, they kill someone on the back line, was thwarted completely. The Graviton Surge from the MYXL, locking Gushue in place, dis destroying him. He had Primal Rage. He popped it, he was already grabbed. And then I liked the counter grab here from Spark, making sure the Reaper, Flora, couldn't do anything with his Death Blossom after he killed one. But the problem yeah. was, Vicky, even though he got naded, he didn't get finished off. So as soon as that Death Blossom ended, he hit shift. And then he just walked away. He literally just walked. He was like, oh, well, I floated, I guess. He doesn't walk in that room. <laughs> you, right. you know what I mean. He just floated away to, back to the rest of his team. So that Graviton Surge was basically for nothing. Yeah, and they made, it was like just making sure the nail in the coffin was there. They threw out the anti there too. Architect was the one that was having the least amount of fun because he was holding on to that Death Blossom for a while. The three times he came out of spawn, first time he got stunned, he got taken care of. Second time he Absolutely. comes out, they focus down on, on Architect. He, or, uh, third time's a charm, right? You come in, nope. They make sure the Architect can't do anything about, about the well, fact the problem that the is. Yeah. The Q button sometimes on Reaper acts like the Farah Q. Uh, you press Q and you die because he can't use his Wraith when he's in that form. He also can't cancel the Death Blossom either. So you're kind of stuck. You have to rely on your team to kind of back you up, Diva to bait you in Defense Matrix, or the rest of your team to just kind of help you in general. But that's not there. Architect pressing Q in those situations, I don't think would have made the difference maker because Bianca would have just absorbed that in those bubbles or Yuck Pung would have just hit Q, um, hit shift, you know, that fortify that reduces all that damage and stops you from getting headshot. Here we go now, the spark on their offense same kind of thing. We're probably just going to see this uh, the entire night because IDK and MCD with this backline combo makes it almost impossible to dive. Gushue is just going to kind of juggle himself up onto this high ground over and over again, building towards that nano boost. MCD is 65% of the way there already, but right now, um, and what we saw on Oasis, Flora is on the McCree. So even if he does jump in, he's going to get perma stunned with along with that break. But Bianca, unfortunately, ends up going down. That's a long walk back from that Diva. Gushui is going to be able to get a lot quicker. In fact, they actually nano Bernard, who kills off Friday. Oh, and look at the amount of energy that Bernard has, having so much damage coming out. And also, MCD so consistent on stopping Bianca, putting Bianca to sleep like twice there in that engagement it looked like. And now MCD's gone down. That's a big pick to help. Jonak keeps the the rest of NYXL together. They they're forced to disengage. You see Bianca trying to get into position to actually create some space and be a threat, but they still have the spark on both angles. They don't want to find themselves getting sandwiched, especially when Gushu is trying to get into position. Yeah, Jonak killing MCD there was pretty big. It just meant Spark couldn't just kind of rush them down, knowing that they lacked a tank. Maybe comes the engage onto the front line now as Young Punk is very, very low as Shy transforms into the Diva. And this is a threat too as Shy he gets booted out of the, the mech, but doesn't have the duplicate, um, not the duplicate, but the Diva Bomb instead. Friday actually stunning Shy. That's a threat, but being able to get right back into your mech as quickly as possible. Spell success, doesn't find anyone. Luckily, the building's right there to resort the to. Feather, yeah, Feather's right there too. Bringing this fight close quarters. When you're in this side room, you are just part of the Reaper sandwich that you don't want to get eaten up by. Bianca's found Bernard, and here comes a Death Blossom that Architect was able to build. Feather's turn now as he's going to get the Death Blossom himself. Gushway's in this primal. They stop Gushway and they do so much damage. The Spark were nearly there, but unfortunately, they only were able to get that one tick here. I love the way the Spark are playing, and it's the NYXL now that are forced into the side room. But look at those ultimates now, Jaws, as they unleash. Gushway gets stunned. What can they do? Nothing, because he gets melted. Uh, oh, beautiful sleep! MCD puts <laughs> down Flora, cancels what? that high noon. They're going to be able to re-engage though now as Jonak is back into the fight. Jugpung 2 arrived on the point, so now that uh, the Spark have to go again. They have acquired two ticks, but they've only got a minute remaining now, Vicky. 
Oh, Featherhead used his Death Blossom in that side room, and no one was there. Maybe trying to cover some space, but that that could have been crucial here for this potential last fight. We're gonna have Architects still hanging out to the high ground. NYXL, they're grouped together and grouped a lot more consistently in comparison to what we had seen in the first map. They're all on the high ground now, though, Vicky, and Shy has that duplicate available too. So all he needs to do is transform into Bianca. Jodak's gonna be the first target. Force out with Taxi Field, and you might just find the win. But Nars already down though, and I need keys to follow too. The window's doing too much damage. And the fact, too, here that you not only have to deal with the window, but you have Architect holding onto the high ground, and now they've isolated him. There's nowhere for him to go, and now you have less than 30 seconds to try to get this point. 30 seconds for 33%. It's going to be 10 seconds, roughly, before they even try and make their engage. You can see everybody kind of spawning in. Shy has still got that duplicate online, but Friday's going to have the rally to deal with it. As soon as he hits Shy, hit that duplicate, he's going to hit Rally almost instantly. In fact, he's a little bit behind. Only one more percent, he should do it. Oh, and they do here. They boot Shy off, and unfortunately, he can't get back, and it's OT here for the NYXL to keep holding back the Spark to potentially force the Spark to lose a third map of the month. It's four finds Bernard, and this is how you do it here. Architect is one, and he can't even use a Death Blossom again in this last fight. Yakon's on fire, he finds two, and four is unstoppable. Jaws, the NYXL, successfully hold this defense around the Spark. Wow, what a defense from the Spark, uh, from the NYXL even. Unreal, you can see. I saw Flora's happy face there as he just jumps up from his chair. Spark not looking so happy. I mean, like I mentioned, at the start of the series, Vicky, they're very much expected to win this. They have been looking so good with Shy in the roster. Their game plan seems flawless, sending him in with Copy and Gushue with the Nano and just demolishing the back line. But it's just not happening right now. The, the MYXL managed to hold them on first. It was a struggle for them to capture second point, but it very much felt like they were in control of the game. They almost felt like they read their game plan on Oasis and was like, okay, we've downloaded you now. We're ready to rock and roll with Anubis. And you can't sleep, too, because now the NYXR are building some of that momentum. We're tied in the series, one-to-one -one between the Spark and the NYXL. Don't go anywhere, because at the other side of this break, we're going to be moving on to a map number three. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez It Grooves. So much flavor, it's a mind crunch. TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League. 
and by NetApp, the official data management partner of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, everyone, to the East Region Knockouts presented by Xfinity Jaws. We have an even series on our hands, and the NYXL, they seem to have gotten it together because we saw them adapt, and they overcame the spark in that second map. Oh yeah, they did. Their comp very much suited Anubis as well. Using that Orisa and the Diva, the Diva to control the space on the high ground, and then the Orisa to control the space on the point, protecting Jonak, protecting Friday on the BAP and the Brig, respectively. And it was very difficult to get anything done. Um, there was a lot of very, very small, play, uh, small plays that were happening off camera. There are so many little interactions that sometimes you don't see, especially in these kind of comps. Uh, the with the the dupla goats, the dive goats kind of thing, but for <laughs> what I meant was for MYXL's comp, there was a point where Jonak through the window killed MCD, which halted Spark's push, which they initially actually found a kill off. And they were able to halt MCD out of a very, very small cubby, and boom, Jonak was already pre-firing and insta-killed MCD, and it, it just, it put, in a, it put a real dampener on the Spark. But now we head over to Numbani, and this, comp from the spark very much favors uh, Nimbani. These high grounds are so easily accessible. Uh, the problem here for MYXL, or the problem they might run into, is if Yukpung forfeits this high ground. If he forfeits the high ground and goes so low, and Gu Shui and Shai and Bernard are able to control that, this first point is going to be very hard to defend. Especially since their goal for the last two maps seems to be to try to split up the NYXL, try to sandwich them, especially Gushue, who tries to dive into those initial engagements, forces them off of that high ground. Now we're going to retreat here, Jaws and the, the Sparker, actually just trying to get into position to try to contest the NYXL on that high ground. Yeah, they are. You see everybody from the NYXL kind of just chilling. Feather is just waiting for them to come through the door. Gushue gets grabbed back in, but and he's going to be over from MCD. So they can go two ways here. They can continue to go up these stairs or they can go coast side and jump up from there. But the problem is, Bernard is not on the D.Va. So the only thing that's going to rely, that's going to be good for Kushway here is the bubbles. That's not ideal when you want to go coast because you want your other tank off of the high ground as well, absorbing some of that damage. Oh. MCD and Gushui get uh, just evaporated, <laughs> turned turn back into atoms. They kill Flora, but the spawn positions are so close it shouldn't really matter. It's just about this first initial breach here, Vicky. The first breach for the spot. Can they get through the airlock that uh, Yuckpung has created on this high ground? If they can, it's good. If they can't, they're just going to be halted here forever. And with Jonak having a window now as well, it's going to make it a whole lot worse. And the fact that they're fighting in close quarters against Feather, look at Feather's Death Blossom in comparison to Architect. I mean, just the amount of damage that they've been able to put out and Yuckpung pulling the rest of the spark together, it's difficult to deal with. They want Nano right now. Like, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to juggle Gu Shui in and out of this corner and wait for this Nano. So they're now going to go main. Nano Gu Shui up into high ground. Shai's almost got the ult as well. In fact, it just came off online. This is the engagement they're looking for. Yeah, they're also opting to go for a different option. Here comes Gu Shui, though, and the Nano boost that you were just mentioning. MCD putting it onto Gu Shui. He's about to get the primal. Shy already pulling the trigger on the duplicate. Get the tick, get the tick. About to get the Diva Bomb, and they, yeah, they're almost nearly there. They didn't get it just yet. It looks like now they just did. The Dead Eye from Flora as he gets put to sleep. Huge sleep dart that we've been seeing from MCD come out, especially after that last game. Uh, currently, Bernard has found Feather, and the way that the NYXL are falling here is not the way that the NYXL wants to play, especially with both the support fallen jaws. Unfortunately, they're gonna have to go for a reset. Great way for the Spark now to take this point. They've executed that perfectly, actually rotating through those ults to split up the NYXL like we've seen throughout the series. Yeah, going rain was perfect. You notice Yuck Pang actually dropped down off the high ground. And what did I say? You drop down off yep. high ground, you give up so much space and room. And who was up on high? Well, it was Shy. His uh, self-destruct there, almost triple killed. It was Jonax in Mortality Field that saved them from that My duplicated self-destruct. The issue was, as soon as that goes down, Gu Shui then went to town. And then, you mentioned it perfectly, Vicky, Spark, all they want to do is separate the MYXL, and that's exactly what they did. Using Bernard's Graviton Surge to lock a couple of people down as well, as Gu Shui was just, just roundhousing people left, right, and center using that Primal Rage. Yeah, absolutely. And then displaced Yakpung, that's huge. A big anti though onto Friday in Florida. Luckily, Friday has that rally to keep the rest of the NYXL alive, and they're going to dive and make sure that Architect isn't a problem. Florida, though, and using that window, 
the Dead Eye at the damage, finding Architect and MCD. The Spark are at a huge disadvantage with Gushui taking too much damage, and they're going to want to go for a reset now. Oh boy, Architect keep, keeps dying first. Like, he keeps teleporting to the back line, and Flora stuns him every single time. Or it's either Friday or Flora, the flashbang or the shield flash. One of the two. It doesn't matter which one, because he dies anyway. He just gets found the hammered. Um, that's not really where you want to be as Architect. Yeah, you want to be in the background, but you've got to make sure you're playing at a safe distance. They are going to go in once again with this copy, I could imagine, but it's actually MYXM oh, starting off with the bomb. No. Okay, now Shy goes down. That's more time off the bank now for the Spark. they got 2 minutes and 30 seconds remaining. They're going to have to wait for this Nano again, I feel, but they have got grabs, so they could even just have Shy transform into Bianca and just all in that grab. They're just trying to buy so much time away from the Spark. Shy, though, coming back. Architect also has that Death Blossom. Trying to find a position. Gushui diving all in. It has the primal despite getting stunned. And it's going to be Shy to have three tanks on board for the Spark. So many ultimates to work with. Shy takes a lot of damage. He gets demeched immediately. And it's Gushui who's splitting the piece. Talk about splitting the NYXL. It's Gushui who's doing a lot of that. Shy's going to be able to utilize the Diva Bomb. He doesn't find anyone, but it's Friday who's finding IDK. It's a good start for the NYXL, but they've lost Flora and the Dead Eye. And the Dead Blossom from Architect finding everyone in the East. Spark are going to get this payload moving to the second point. May not, not be enough time, Jaws, for the NYXL to recuperate and get onto this point. Yeah, they've got Lucio, so it's going to be pretty tough to get back without it being a weird, staggered fight. I can imagine they're just going to give it Architect priority on this corner first. Yeah, it looks to be that way. Normally we say point two on and Barney. Oh, no, they're actually going to go for the touch. Oh, Zero point it was zero one meters. Okay. Oh, a pixel. A pixel away. And he has a Death Blossom. Flora comes back with a dead eye. The Death Blossom gets booped out of the way. The immortality field from Jonak to keep them big at grab, bay. Big grab. But the Spark and the Big Grab coming in. You see Jack Punk getting out of it. He has a supercharger. Oh, Jaws, the way that this is going back and forth. They finally find Feather. He's the first victim to fall in this team fight. And a huge anti onto Jonak and Flora. Hopefully with this window though, they could buy some respect after finding Bernard and it's Flora who's been able to find that head. He's gone out of this fight and Friday is anti. Can he do anything? No, he's gone. Gushway is terrorizing the piece on the back line. He is, yeah, but Chernak. Oh no, oh. Gushway, the rising uppercut there, managed to take out Jonak, but the spawns are very Still much contested. in favor of the MYXL here. You look, Jonak, he's gonna have to back off. The self destruct's gonna clear everybody else's way as well. Oh, the way that the Spark have not given this up. They disengage just briefly, just reposition, and that's what this high ground offers. Shy now has a focusing beam onto Yak Pung, another big anti that MCD has been so consistent with. The Death Blossom from Architect, he could fall from the skies. They won't see it coming. He could try to find a situation here, and here he goes, utilizing oh. it, finding four. Architect has been absolutely on fire with this Reaper. Oh man, maybe his flank TPs aren't that great, Vicky, but he knows exactly when to press Q. And normally as Reaper as well, <laughs> you just want to be using Death Boss to finish fights, and that's exactly what he does. It was really unfortunate for the MYXL that that Yuck Pung actually went down first. That's that stable Orisa on the payload that is oh. able to just juggle the shields. Going down means that uh, Bianca and Flora are going to have to be there to touch, and Feather, of course, too. There's an unfortunate kill onto Shy, which does result in Spark actually having to back all the way up. They only get a minute to finish this payload as well, Vicky. This is going to be an overtime if it's going to be anything. Flora, does he know he's walking into five oh. people? Uh, yeah, well, he does now. He ends up backing <laughs> off. But this is going to be a very quick engage, I can imagine. They got Nano and Rally. The Spark just looking to set up for success here. Shy needs to be careful. The fact that Shy got picked off there bought a lot of time for the NYXL to hold back the spark. We're seeing a different rotation though, approach from Architect, and he does have Gushui right there to help enable him. The way that you currently have this corner being controlled by the NYXL is all actually due to the fact that Shy had gone down the dead. I find Shy. He was too high. He constantly finds these hits. Yeah, Shy unfortunately just didn't see it coming. Gushui got stunned, and now having the rally from Friday is going to buy even more time for the NYXL. The window and the dead blossom. Where are you going to go if you're the spark? They no. buy Bernard, and now they have less than 10 seconds, Jaws, to get all the payloads. I don't think they're going to be able to make it back time. Gooshway, I think, just killed two people of his own team. He booted Fleather with his ultimate back into the rest of his team. MCD kills oh, Flora, but it doesn't no. matter because he's in the he is literally in MYXL spawn. I want to get a replay of that one because. Feather wanted to clear up that fight. There was a shield down in front of him or near him that he kind of juggled his way in and out of. Um, his own shield, his Orisa's shield. 
but Gushui landed on top of them, Primal Rage, and looked like he pushed the Reaper into his backline. That is not what you want to do. It's like, oh, special delivery. Oh, man, I got to see that fight again. The, the death bosses have been so good, and that one to finish up the, the fight from Feather was fantastic, but it was aided by Gushui. This, uh, this is Architect's cleanup for these, uh, for these points. And it has been so these death bosses that have really been seeing the, sealing the deal. We'll have to see how Spark want to defend this. It's going to be the same comp. We're probably just going to see these mirrored uh, the entire night. Unless four does. You might want out with the hands over here. You control a little bit more of the high ground, but you're going to get punished almost instantly. So I think the Korea is better um, in this situation just because of the stuns. But we'll have to wait and see if he does stick on this one. Especially when you have Shy, Gushui, Architect all uh, trying to control that high ground. It could be uh, difficult if you're floor. He helps to stick with this, but we'll see. I mean, Nubani does provide that high ground uh, range for Hanzo to flourish, but when you have to deal with the Echo and Architect, yeah, of course, you're teleporting onto high ground. Yeah, you're as well. Yeah. Um, that's all you're going to be doing. So the high ground's going to be only going to be accessible where your shield is. So he's not going to be going on these big flanks. He's just going to be there to punish Goose where he's diving again. It kind of works in the same way Fan the Hammer does. The Storm Arrows just does, does infinitely more damage because of the, the headshot potential as well, which isn't there with the Fan the Hammer. Unless the game just came out, of course, which is when <laughs> Fan the Hammer could headshot, which was very cool. Uh, if anybody really remembers uh, the good old days. Only pain. <laughs> only pain. <laughs> only pain. <laughs> Do you remember the, the McCree Revolver 2 shooting infinitely slower as well? That oh felt, God. it felt like a cannon. Like you were like, bang, bang. Oh, it felt so clean. I like the quicker Scatter firing speed like now, though. Like <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Hands are uh, still but... shooting logs, man. Those, those hitboxes on those arrows, oh. I swear to God, they are so inconsistent sometimes. Yeah, I say that as I so normally just walk in a straight too. line towards Hands. Um, I'm not trying to play that on the game. It's normally just me. Uh, talking about walking in a straight line, the way that Yakun is consistently finding these picks onto Shy has been huge. And now, not only has Yakun been, been put to sleep, but he also gets anti luckily, Jonex on the Baptiste to help save him with the immortality field. He's taking a lot of damage, but talking about Hanzo, oh, talking about the shot. Dragons, oh, Flora down two, and Bianca oh. is gonna match him, make it a 3k for Flora. The NYXL, they've gotten it together, wasting no time, five minutes in the time bank to get this pale and moving job. All right, Flora's feeling himself a little bit there. Two little headshots followed up with a storm arrow shot into Shy. Make that a three piece. That'll be a meal to go. <laughs> now we're seeing Architect on the Genji. Okay, so they just want to dive straight in and just kill Flora. That is the game plan. Just kill Flora straight away. Fancy uses the dash. He hasn't really got too much else to protect him. But right now, the. <laughs> the the spark comp, not quite finding much. Um, it, it's Jonak on Friday. I managed to keep the tanks alive through all this engagement. The immortality feels from Jonak has just been so good. And you definitely expect this from a veteran support player like Jonak. And he's performing out of his mind right now. Also, Architect doing Architect things, trying to uh, be the building block for the team with the Genji. We've seen this so MCD? many times from Architect. And the grab to isolate what are you MCD. Doing there, son? Oh, he was called out of position. Oh, unfortunately caught on 4K. Now Bianca is going to help get this max charge. Look at all this damage coming in. The NYXL, they're quite literally on a roll, and they've built up so much momentum. They're going to get this payload at the second point when no one from the Spark to touch. The idea of the Spark's comp is to split the NYXL. The Spark comp got split by NYXL there. What was that? I don't know why MCD was so far to the left. He, uh, potentially going for a nade so he can help Banar set up with a Graviton Surge. That was but risky. It was so risky. He ended up dying for it, and then the rest of the spot were just kind of found solo. Shy ended up copying, couldn't find much. And now we're on the final corner, Vicky, with five minutes to go as well. And Bernard's um, already dead. Ultimate, uh, he had the grab. He dies with the grab. And IDK had pulled the trigger on the rally. Look they at lose. all the damage they, they he's lose right here, Vicky. Oh, this is not the way you want things to go. If you're the Spark, they have no support either. That's it. The payload has reached its point. The NYXL now are at match point. Two to one now over the Spark. This is not what I expected coming into wow. today, and I'm not sure it's what the Spark expected either. That homestand buff's going to have to come in big time this next map because NYXL are now at point. This is a ridiculous showing, honestly. 
The Spark have only lost two maps up until today. And now they are down two more. They've doubled their map losses in a single series. This is a ridiculous performance right now. The, the Spark comp, it looks so clean on Oasis. They knew exactly how to execute against what the MYXL were running with the Orisa. But now they just look a little bit lost. These dives aren't as coordinated as they, they once seem to be. These nanos onto Gushwe with Shy copying and jumping in. It looked like a going to, it was looked like it was going to be a good map as well for Nambani, for their comp specifically. First looks relatively easy for them when they got those ultimates online. But after that, just kind of crumbled. It was on Architect to clean up the fights with his Death Blossom. And apart from that, the, the streets phase, normally it doesn't exist, Vicky. Point B, Numbani, it doesn't exist. It's a mirage in the desert some of the time, or most of the time. But they were able to snowball on just with those Death Blossoms. But the MYXL, they're catching MCD off guard completely, just out in the middle of nowhere, in no man's land. And then they're able to pick apart the rest of Spark. And the Spark can't really regroup as quick as uh, 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 as quickly as they want to because they don't have a Lucio either. Like, I don't know, man. Th this is this is crazy. The Spark are now down two maps. They need to be able to almost set up this reverse sweep now. Otherwise, they're out. And the first seed are going to go down to fourth seed. This is insane, Vicky. This is not what the script said. I don't know if I just got an outdated version of the script, but the NYXL are performing and they've adjusted. And after that take on Numbani to get that payload moving, that was when everything just snowballed away from the spark. They just did not know what to do. They were not able to regroup on time. You may mention MCD was called out. They got to get themselves together. They're currently performing in front of a live audience and they want to make sure that they impress their friends, especially in this series that determines everything for the Hanjo Spark. Let's find out if the NYXL take the entire series. We'll go on to the final, potential final map for the NYXL at the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. 
Welcome back, everyone, to the Regional Knockouts. Jaws, what a series this has been. The NYXL are currently at map point. The Spark, they were able to take the first map. This is our first seeded team in the APAC region. Meanwhile, they're just one map away from being completely taken out of the June Joust. Yeah, and I think a lot of people's pick are going to get boomed as well. The... MYXL made it here today by beating the Valiant and also kind of a weakened fusion. And this is a scary situation for the Spark to be in. You looked at, I can imagine they looked at the MYXL and were like, okay, so they haven't beaten these crazy teams. The Fusion have looked good in recent times, of course. Let's not, um, let's not take away from that. But when they weren't playing EQO, they didn't look, they were a little bit lackluster. And the Valiant, everybody is kind of expected to beat. The Spark, on the other hand, had beat Dragons 3-0, and they had only lost two maps up until today. I think that is such an important thing to hit on, because right now, the NYXL are just, if you if you remove the names from both the teams and all the players and whatnot, you'd be like, okay, so it's uh, Spark that's winning, right? Uh, but it's, it's, it's completely the opposite. The NYXL are just demolishing the Spark currently. They know exactly, and I said it in map number two, they've downloaded the comp from the Spark and have just internalized the information and now they can springboard back and deal the damage to the Spark and Gooshway and Shy have been instrumental to the Spark's roster but apart from Oasis their dives their nano engages with the echo copy have just looked well just not great they're caught out a couple of times as well MCD got solo grabbed Vicky on point B of Nabani it's not looking good but Homestand buff. There you go. They put it on. You can see all the fans cheering along already. They got to use that right now, Vicky. They got to use that power. They got to, the, the crowd needs to breathe some life into the spark because they definitely look deflated after that one. And again, this is, this is such a big deal because this is our first seed team that could potentially just drop down to that fourth place spot that we were talking about earlier. But the NYX are looking so good. And it's interesting, too, because recently, I feel like just a few days ago, Jonak had an interview and he was talking about how his goals are to be the best team captain for the NYXL. He wants to keep the rest of these players together. And although in that first map, it looked pretty convincing that the Spark were able to take it over the NYXL, the adjustments that you just made note on that the NYXL have made have been enough to really gain this momentum in the mid-series. And now if they take this potential last map, that's it, the NYXL qualify for the Chun Joust tournament. Yeah, Jonak's the veteran on this roster as well. He's been in, the, he's been on the MYXL team since its inception, all the way back all, a number of years ago at this point. And he's leading a lot of these rookie players too. Flora, who recently turned 18, Feather, Friday as well. Yuck Pung and Bianca have, uh, have been in the league before on teams like Toronto Defiant, of course, but have uh, been cycled into the team. So Jonak, yeah, being that leader, being the thing that NYXL need to drive them forward. The team previously uh, was all about Jonak. They pocket Jonak to the high heavens, Vicky, and then he pops off. He starts clicking head on the Zen. That is, this is how this guy is known. This is why this guy is so famous, because he is just such a, just a cracked support player, like a ridiculous Zen player, but now stepping into a more leader role where he's not the focus of the team, where it's his rookies that he has to command forwards and just be, um, uh, just be this standout figure for the roster and be the be the hyung is what they call it in uh, Korean culture and that is exactly what he's been doing it is the it is normally the flora and feather show right now so a stark contrast to what the team has seen in <laughs> previous years. Yeah, and you know, we made mentioned earlier that the NYXL beat the Spark in the main melee, but that was, of course, when the Spark looked different. Shy wasn't there to really help the foundation of the Spark. You know, the NYXL seems to have figured something out around the Spark that has really transitioned into the June Joust. As we get set up, though, here, we're starting things off, and the Spark are on the attack. Wow, so Shy and Architect have already switched here. Shy is now on the Korean Architect on the Echo. And Gooshway, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's running that Orisa. Almost a mirror cop for the Spark. <laughs> They're like, well, our monkey and our Echo are not doing so hot. How about we try a little bit of mirroring? 
He said this time around, they've got the Echo instead of the Reaper. So this comp is just all about poking people down. There's a lot more shield pressure on the side of the Spark, or at least long range shield pressure, that is. Feather has to get up close and personal with the original shield in order to demolish it. High ground advantage now for the Spark, but MYXL not going to let this go down easy. Look at this window instantly open to push his Gushui and the rest of the Spark down to the low ground. Oh! And Flora following up too, making sure Architect had nowhere chase. to go. And they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna chase here. And you talked about having to fight close quarters. Well, that's exactly what they're bringing to the Spark. Flora goes down, but without Flora, they were able to fight two there. Bion can also try to clean things up. And great start for the NYXL on the defense. They also have enough time to get right back into position on the high ground. What's funny too, actually, was the NYXL really struggled the other week when they played against uh, the charge. Choice of One's Echo was just so good in that series. The NYXL just couldn't deal with it. It really feels like they practice a lot against Echo teams and been able to understand how Echoes want to play and learn how to play around it without an Echo of their own. Right now, Architect just switched over to the Echo rather than Shy, so a different style almost. And in this comp, a very different style of how you play Echo. You don't want to dive in. You want to be the pokey, long range, just shoot shooting shields kind of echo and then burning people down when people get low. Floor is now on the ash, so Architect has to be a little bit more careful. Deadeye to open it up, but it should just clear some space. Now an Architect as well with the duplicate copying the D.Va. Now with that space though, you can see the Spark trying to get right behind the NYXL and they found Yuck Pung. That's a big pick and Architect with another pick on the Jonek. Make it crucial when you lose your main tank and your Baptiste, no immortality field and the NYXL now are starting to look mortal. With Shy going down, he still was able to find one in the process, Architects will be able to push all the way up to get some space for the rest of the Spark to push this payload. They're going to be able to touch though, Vicky. You can see Yuckpun galloping to the payload. They're going to have the Supercharger online momentarily as well as that window too. So they can create so much space, forcing the rest of the Spark all the way back and um, even potentially making them use Rally for this engagement. Oh, the Diva Bomb though, charging into the back line. Luckily, they have the building right there to retreat. Jonek with the window again. MCD not there just yet. It's shy with the dead eye and the supercharger too. They get rid of it. So that's actually the dynamite that negates it. And Bob now comes in. They're gonna make sure that Bob isn't a problem. Not the seventh man on the field for the NYXL, but Feather now with the dead blossom and floor popping off. That was actually a follow-up too from the pool that we just saw from Yakung. And also the supercharger really enabling the NYXL with this damage boost. 60 seconds remaining, Vicky, and NYXL are going to be able to hold the spark on the first. What an unbelievable turnaround. Fly Friday right now has Rally. Well, he will do in a couple of seconds, of course. Flora is potentially going to have another Bob too. Look at the ultimate bank for the spark. Pretty bare. IDK switched over to the Mercy to give additional damage to Shy and Architect. More or less Shy in this kind of composition. You want the Architect to kind of do his own kind of thing. Maybe the dupe comes online as well, but they're going to have a tough, tough time against all this stacking armor that Friday provides. Oh, Jaws, they have less than 30 seconds to get this first point. The NYXL are doing so good on the defense. Very similar to what we had seen on Numbani from this team. Feather trying to find an angle. Friday has the rally to start There's the rally, engagement. There's the engage. Yep, and then there, you see it. They're trying to circle around the Spark, taking some damage. He's going to be shy. He's nearly won. They're forced onto the bridge, and they've isolated shy. This is not what you want to see on overtime. They at least start to contest it. Architect has the duplicate, but it may be too late when you have Feather controlling your back line. He teleports onto the high ground, and now they just have to make sure that they can clean up around Architect and make sure they can fully hold the Spark. This is too late. They're trickling in now. Too little, too late. The Spark are going to get held on first. The NYXL. It's happening, Josh. I can't believe it. Have an extremely clear win condition right now. That payload was a couple of meters before that first point. So they just need to get to first. That is all. One clean fight will do it. Normally, these comps don't really lead to clean fights because there's a lot of sustain, a lot of survivability. The Orisa takes a long time to take down when she has her Fortify, her Golden, her Shift, whatever you want to call it. You have the uh, you have the Reaper, of course, too, very difficult to take down with the Wraith form. Like these fights aren't really decisive unless there's a big Death Blossom or a big Self Destruct. So it will be a little bit more of a a, a staggered fight for the Spark if they do lose the initial engagement. But the MYXL stepping up big time against the Spark. Hello. And you got to be shaking too, if you're the Spark right now. I mean, we talked about the homestand buff, playing, against your, uh, playing with your home crowd, Vicky. But sometimes too. 
yeah, sometimes it can work in the opposite way as well. There's a lot of pressure on your shoulders to perform on stage. After such a long period of time, too, where you've been playing at home, playing in your facilities. Yeah. That is very true, actually. And you have to consider, like, you know, nerves are definitely a thing. You gotta shake things off. I'm shaking, I'm not even the spark. I mean, just this is insane what we're seeing from the NYXL. This would be a huge upset. And the way they've been performing on the defense is just insane. Now it's their time to push this payload to where the spark couldn't. Hey, same kind of comps here. The spark, though, this time around, not choosing to run this Echo, so they can't match Feather, but... They do have Shy to kind of check it. The only issue with that... Oh, it doesn't look like maybe Friday is switching. Okay, I was going to mention the only issue with that is that with the Mercy Pocket, the Ash is a little bit less effective because you almost have that permanent healing in the skies. But Friday switching over to the Brink is also pretty good. Actually, Flora is going to go over to the Kree. They're changing wholesale swap ups. They know the comp, and this is the advantage of being on the offense too. They know the comp the Spark are running, so they can make adjustments almost instantly something that they unfortunately can't do, except for just controlling this high ground, which is exactly what they want. They want to make sure Gushui could rotate safely, control this upcoming corner with the shield. There's a lot of that poke damage that you made mention of, building into some of these ults. Currently have a shy narrowing down that bob very shortly. Yeah, you can you, uh, you can hear the galloping there of uh, Gushui trying to go high ground. <laughs> they didn't know where they were going to go. So actually a little bit of space has been Offered here. Oh, what a kill onto Jonak though. Window's gonna open up. Is it gonna be enough? It's on the payload too, and now the Bob's there from Shy. He's uncontested in the back and cleaning things up around floor too. And Yakpong, they just unfortunately were in shambles the moment that Jonak had gone down. Good tracking from Shy, but that's what happens when you leave yourself open in the line of sight of Nash. It very much looked like the MYXL there wanted to bait the spark into going high ground, but the spark were a little bit wiser than that. They tried to go under, the spark rotated the stairs, and as soon as one person from the MYXL peeked their head out lower, they instantly rotated oh. back down, so they didn't get too much free space here. Banar is looking for somebody, <laughs> knows someone's around. Yeah, okay, he did see him in the end. Feather should be fine. He does get a repair pack thrown at him or a cookie, and uh, he is healed on up. So now they're going to take this high ground control. They do have Flora as well to use that Deadeye to open up oh. a lot of this space. Shy doesn't have Bob to kind of deny a lot of that as well. So Feather even just TPing into the front line. Oh. That's not where you want to be. Was that a bait maybe turn to they make them think that potentially Death Blossom's there? Or they're just going to back off. They, they want no business with this. Maybe Tron is trying to reset. But the Spark, I love the way that they're disengaging here. Great on time. Shy has Bob after landing so many of those shots. See, Architect trying to contest him. He gets away on time, luckily, with that Wraith. And that's what you have to deal with that stun from Flora on the McCree. Currently, you have Shy now activating the Bob. And on the payload to contest, you see the NYXL disengaging, going for a different rotation to actually engage right behind the Spark. Bernard taking so much damage, and Architect, Architect goes dead. down first. That's not what you want here, especially since the Death Blossom would have been online for the fight. The rally to start the engagement, and the Supercharger with Gushui gets annihilated. The immediate meltdown from Yuck Punk. They're gonna do it, Vicky. Lord, now, the NYXL, this is happening now, Jaws. The Spark can't do anything. They need to touch this point. They need to stop this payload. They're not gonna be able to do it. MCD's gonna go down. They're gonna contest for a couple of seconds, but that's gonna be it. The NYXL, they make it into the June Joust, the Spark, they're out, despite their flawless record. This is what mattered, and in the end, it's the NYXL dethroning the Spark. Absolutely unbelievable. The fourth seed knocks out the first seed. Spark go down, 3-1 as well. They only managed to take Oasis. They came out the gates running, steamrolling towards the NYXL, but the NYXL were able to springboard back, push that aggression back at the Spark and just destroy them. What, oh, what a heartbreak for the Spark too. At their very own homestand, the NYXL knocked them out of the June Joust. I'm shaking right now, Jaws. I am actually like, this, where's the script? I got I got the wrong script here. We, we came into the series on paper, looking at the spark. All right, homestand advantage. They've been doing great this month. NYXL, they finally got their footing this month, but this is not what I was expecting as the final results as to who from the Eastern region is moving on to the June Joust tournament. Yeah, what an unbelievable showing. I think uh, the MYXL is something to be feared at, at this point. 
You had such a big run up if you were the Spark defeating the Dragons 3-0. They looked unstoppable, only lost two maps coming into this elimination day. And the NYXL weren't looking, well, they were looking okay, right? They weren't looking out of this world. But my word, did they make a statement today, Vicky? Absolutely. And our player of the match presented by Xfinity is going to be Flora. To no surprise, though, considering the fact that Flora was popping off. We were talking about Architect, too, but Flora was just as consistent making these fights close range, making sure that this absolutely stings. I love the follow-up, too, that we had whenever Friday was there to help heal for Florida. Despite those big antis, too, that we saw from MCD here, Jaws, it just was Flora able to just regroup, being able to wraith away, drop that anti, and then re-engage when it really was necessary. Yeah, Flora definitely deserved the MVP here, the player of the match. And, and the Ash picks, too. The Ash picks were insane as well. His replay, his creep play, just everything. Flora is a rookie coming into this season. Recently, he just turned 18 as well, a couple of months ago, I believe. And yeah, it's it's been great to watch him flourish, honestly. And Jonak, I mentioned, has been the veteran, the leader for this team as well. It's no longer about him. It's not the Jonak show. It is the Flora and Feather show. And you can see how much support this guy is getting. Yeah, I really like the what the NYXL is adapting to. This is some team development, if I say so myself, Jaws. What a series it's been, and it's only the first series of the day for these knockout series. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna throw it out to a quick break. We gotta re we kind of catch our breaths here because wow, I'm still shaking after that series. When we come back though, we're gonna have some bold predictions. We'll see you on the other side. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, everyone. Our first series for the day is in the books, the NYXL. They take it over the Spark, and the Spark are sent back home. They're in their home stand right now, Jaws, so at least they have the fans there to help cheer them up. The NYXL, though, they're booming. And now that we're back with some bold predictions presented by Pringles, I'm honestly still kind of wondering, what am I going to say here, Jaws? My bold prediction, honestly, I want to focus on the NYXL. And now that they've qualified into the June Jaws, I think that they're going to win their first series, and I think we could potentially see the NYXL with a comeback uh, in the winners' finals. I think that they're going to do really good in the winners' finals, but I don't think that they're going to find themselves in the grand finals. If you get what go I mean. on, because it's because it's bold prediction. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say go, it. I want to hear your bold predictions. Let's let's see it. Uh, they're just going to win it. Guangbong's going to come what? in. Oh, just start, wow. Okay. Just Whoa. start clicking heads on the Widowmaker. <laughs> Oh, okay, and okay. Fella, that was cool. gonna hit six man death blossoms every single fight, and it's gonna be easy. It's gonna be easy clap, NYXL, just take the dub. I mean, after that series, I 
they're definitely, I mean, we saw them popping off. They jumped out of their seat. Like, that was so wholesome. And good on them, too, because we really saw them grow throughout the June Joust. And at the very end, they've made it through the tournament. They're now sitting in the bracket. They got to wait for the next series to finish to find out who's going to be meeting with them um, in the bracket from the Eastern region. That's going to be the Seoul Dynasty versus the Shanghai Dragons, and that's going to be taken by Achilles and Avril. So, Jaws, we're done for today, and what a way to end the note, too. Yeah, what a way to end uh, this this uh, portion of the day. My word, a big upset. First seed taken down by the fourth NYXL on the come up again, Vicky. Yeah, and with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. But don't go anywhere. There's going to be some more Overwatch League action coming to you soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles. Stay in the game. Welcome back, guys. I'm Achilles, jumping on for the last series of the night to figure out which other team is going to be representing the APAC region in the June Joust. I'm Achilles, joined as always by Avril. And um, yep. let's just go <laughs> here real quick. What just happened? Hello? Any anything? Because uh, I can't dude, really wrap my brain around it. Dude, I'm uh, I'm shaking. I'm shaking up. That was wild. I feel bad for the Hungry uh, fans live there. That's you gotta. You hate to see it. You go four zero in your regular season. Yeah. Two of those wins came from your home stand, and then somehow, at the final hurdle, you lose to the team that shouldn't even be here. It like so they're not even meant to be here, and they they get through, I, and they somehow three one Hangzhou to make it into the actual Jun Just tournament. Unbelievable yeah. performance. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, the the four zero team beaten by the fourth seed. Something about math. The fours cross cancel. I don't. I don't know what's going on. It's this weird X nine uh, run that we have from NYXL. You know, pulling off their you know a reversal of what they normally do. Normally, you know, they're gonna choke in the playoffs. Instead, they kind of choked throughout the season, and then they get wow. into the playoffs. And now they're going yeah, opposite you know, I say going to Hawaii in quotations. They're playing against the North American squads. So it's a really weird inverted reality that we're in at the moment. But I'm all right with it because it's it's damn exciting to see. So a, a huge congratulations to the NYXL. But we still have one more team to decide, and that is a, a huge matchup here, Avril. You and I were able to cast this matchup not very long ago, uh, but it's going to be the Soul Dynasty going up against the Shanghai Dragons yet again. 
Yeah, it's, a, it's we're going to have what I deem to be the kind of Eastern Division APEC El Clasico here. This is my favorite rivalry in the entire division. Um, without, you know, there's there's no sort of, um, I want to say, you know, kind of forced rivalry here. It's not like they're sharing a territory or anything like that. These are just two teams that have had really close games, really solid matchups in the past. I mean, everyone remembers what happened in 2020 playoffs. They just played each other pretty recently. I mean, we've got to highlight two players here as well. Lip and Fitz, I think two of the best hit scan players up and coming. I say up and coming, oh, yeah. really, you, you should wow. know them. By now, Fitz had a real big turn up this particular season, especially in June Joust. Lip's been good all year. Lip, strangely enough, ever since he's come off of the Sombra and he's gone more towards the McCree, like we can see the stats here, and onto the Ashes and onto you know the the what you'd expect to be proper hits. And then also, by the way, the Tracy he showed the main melee. He's been phenomenal. This guy's right at the top of my list in terms of hit scans in the Overwatch League right now. And Fitz is doing a damn well good job of catching up. Yeah, absolutely. And you know we were just kind of, you know, splurging on about this just, you know, over the last two days, I suppose, with Fitz and how consistent he has been as of late, how well he is meshing alongside Prophet. Obviously, Lip and Fleta just as good uh, or, you know, you know, very close to it as far as the DPS duo is concerned. So this is going to be really the key matchup to keep our eyes on and see who is going to be able to come out on top in those hit scan duels because uh, both, yep. they really have their work cut out for them. Like, I would weigh probably the Dynasty's DPS duo higher if you just look at those two, but if it's Fitz versus Lip individually, it becomes way murkier. It's really hard to tell uh, which one is going to have the upper hand in that matchup there. I mean, this is like you know, pretty star-studded rosters across the board here. You've got two MVPs, one on each team, Profit versus Fletty here. You've got Overwatch League winners in, in Gesture and uh, Profit coming over. Lip's been phenomenal this year. I think if Lip keeps playing in his current form, you know, he's got to be in, in talks for role star MVP, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Looking all-star quality, no matter what. So... Just great things all around. I mean, Iziaki's had a fantastic, you know, year so far as well. Uh, I, the, the entire team's been pretty sort of void. Is always going to be void. Uh, it does seem like that Seoul, since losing to Shanghai pretty recently, and as a reminder, the last game that Shanghai played in June Just was actually versus Seoul, where they kind of crushed yeah. them. They kind of destroyed Seoul because Seoul were figuring out the meta. They were trying to figure out June Joust. They were playing this kind of gesture hog thing with Marvel coming to play the Sigma, and it wasn't working. I'm not going to lie. It would look no. pretty bad. Uh, and, and Dynasty, they they agree because we see them uh, at the Hunter Spark homestand, and instantly they change things up. Marvel's back on the bench. Two U's coming in to play D.Va, and also the Sigma, by the way. We saw Sol this weekend, and Sol yesterday specifically, when they brought two U back out, and he was on that Sigma, uh, and now you no longer have Marvel playing the Sigma, and two U's the guy that's just like, you know, I'm the flex tank. I'm going to cover the, all the flex tank roles. He completely demolished. He was so good. That accretion onto Eiling's Nanoblade. Beautiful stuff. And Soul Dynasty, when they want to, they are finally getting it together. Deep into you know a tournament run, deep into a playoff kind of area now. They're suddenly clicking, and that's when Soul the most dangerous. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they've been just looking absolutely terrifying as of late. Gesture, really, you know, reining it in, making sure that he's not overextending, not getting farmed. So it's been an overall good look for the Soul Dynasty as of late. They still have a very tough opponent. I mean, Shanghai Dragons, they're another one of those teams that you really can't count out, especially when it comes down to playoffs. They do excel in that pressure. So this is going to be, you know, hopefully, I should say, a very tight matchup because so far today, things have not gone as anticipated. So uh, hopefully that is not going to be the case here. Hopefully this is going to be another extremely close series. Um, I, for one, am always down with the five maps played, if not more. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We could always have some draws. Make it I mean, happen. You're, you're definitely within within reason here because, I mean, when these two teams face off, and by the way, the record stands at eight and seven, eight in the Shanghai Dragons Court because they just won their last outing versus Seoul, but Seoul have seven. So it's like 15 times these teams have played over the years, which is a crazy amount, by the way. Um, of that, now we're starting to see, you know, Dragons have had some sweeps in there, but when Sol win, they typically will take the series a bit longer. But even, you know, even when Dragons win, well, I think the last game they played was still 3-1, even though Sol were not quite on board, I would say, with, you know, where, where the meta was in terms of their read and all that kind of stuff. So um, I would expect a, a close series. I mean, two of the best teams in the APAC region, especially Sol, when they really start to get it together, really start to make it work, and that's right now. And 
every single Shanghai fan remembers last year during playoffs what happened when you know you met play you met a playoffs ready uh, profit and also Soul Dynasty, and it was bad news. So here it is right now, Soul Dynasty starting six to use on. I mean, we already saw the player camps earlier, so everyone's pretty familiar. Yeah. It's the Profits duo versus Flitter and Lepin. A bunch of great players across both sides. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at, you know, they're climbing the standings here as of late, I would say, for the side of Fits and Profit. We'll have to see how things are going to update with IBM Watson at the end of the weekend and on a Monday. But, uh, whew, yeah, Lee Jang on. Guys putting up huge numbers. You can see Fleta there as well. I mean, everybody on the side of the Dragons, highly rated. Every single time we check in on those power rankings, it's a mix of the fuel. It's a mix of the Dragons. Uh, so this is unsurprising. But we know th that the Dynasty are capable of playing at this level. So numbers aren't everything. Rankings don't always necessarily matter, which is why, you know, you look at Platchett, you look at Avaz when they do their power rankings. Yeah, yeah for sure. Can <laughs> you can just I gotta you can add one thing, for the most part. I gotta add one thing, though. It says Lip is 5 out of 30 for DPS. He's actually number 1 right now. He's actually yeah. number 1 out of all the DPS updated on the IBM uh, Watson power rankings, and 3rd overall for all players. If you're curious as to who the top 5 are, it goes Fearless Fate, Lip Fielder, then Void. So you've got 3 Dragons members on the overall ranking it, it's mo let's be fair it's like mostly dallas field and mostly shanghai dragons because yeah you know those are the two teams that went the deepest in may melee they went to the grand finals and you know watson it really does enjoy it when you win so you're gonna have a lot of those players really high up but lips now taking number one for dps and number three overall for all players where strangely you have two main tanks are actually above them both main tanks of dallas and also shanghai dragons so um all those fake doubters out there, I gotta tell you, IBM Watson is back in fate 100 percent here. So we'll have to we'll have to see how that matchup goes as well because we're seeing a lot of Arissa gameplay coming on through. And um, you know, previously I would have expected I was looking at this meta thinking it's quite a Winston heavy meta. I was looking at a lot of Winston stats, looking sure. at how, how things are going in that regard. And then if you just watch the NYX Alpha Hangzhou game, things move towards Arissa very, very quickly. And when I look across uh, some of the previous matches we've had over the June Joust, especially this homestand weekend, a lot of teams have been moving towards double bubble. Namely, I think Seoul were a, a team very keen on that one because um, even before they had two come into play Sigma, they were already trying to play some double shield. Jesher obviously on the hog, but Marvel, they were really thinking Sigma is one of the plays here. We've got to try and add Sigma to the team. So both teams, I expect that it's going to be some variation of Orisa Diva, maybe Orisa Sigma, maybe a bit of dive still in there, but Orisa is going to be big here today. Yeah, for sure. And we were talking, you know, at length uh, yesterday about that and how that is very, very good for the side of the Soul Dynasty. Uh, we'll have to see how, you know, Fate's going to take to this because, you know, the last time that we did see them, it wasn't that centric on the Orisa. So we'll be a little bit of a change up there. Um, but sure, he's going to be able to just hold down left click, place barriers and, you know, halt some people together. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, to see more of Tuyu on the Sigma because he was phenomenal. Think about, you sure. know, that that uh, amazing Nanoblade shutdown that we saw on Nimbani, just getting that accretion and immediately just blowing up targets. Um, everybody has, you know, kind of thought of Marvel as the guy who's going to be playing the Sigma if you want to run it. He showed it. It was a little bit shaky at the start, had to kind of shake the rust off, I suppose. Um, and then from there, he just got in the top gear and just started shredding people left, right, and center. So it was a really good showing. So yeah. I'm hoping to see some more Sigma from him. Yeah, I think Sol have, you know, it's it's very evident that Sol have definitely found their market. They've found their their stride deep into uh deep into uh, a meta here. It's kinda like, you know, you if you watch the NA games today, it's kinda like Washington Justice kinda late into the season, they've also kinda found their stride. The difference is Sol didn't manage to still get enough wins to make it deep and to, to get to the uh, the knockout stage of the Eastern Division here, so they get to kind of bear the fruit of finding their mark and finding their stride and being able to really prove their worth in a meta, especially an opportunity to get revenge on the Dragons, where, again, they yeah. lost to the Dragons in, in the very recent matchup just before this weekend. So it's uh, an opportunity for these two teams in the Apex El Clasico to, to get it out there and always, you always enjoy when Dragons and Soul play up in a matchup. It's always mega impactful when you see this DPS line of all these four players go up against each other, stack lineups across the board, Shanghai fans out here in full force. Now that Hangzhou Spark have been eliminated, I wouldn't be surprised if all the fans in the audience, they'll be here to back Shanghai now. Yeah, I mean, take the pink jerseys off, put the red ones on, you know, just swap them up, be ready uh, to show your support. So yeah, I mean, they still do have a, uh, you know, a Chinese organization Titans that they can there. cheer for at this event. There is a, yeah, there is a cheeky Titans fan <laughs> chilling in the audience. That's a rare breed.
yeah, he's showing up. Like I mean, a, like a I don't think you're gonna be getting any. Them. They're like, oh, this, this is, <laughs> this is an NA fan. Uh, I don't think they have breadsticks really, uh, really over there. I don't think it's very common, so he's not going to be able to collect his breadsticks too much. But yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, there's probably pe- they probably have Pizza Hut. They ha- I think they, sure. I think got Pizza Hut. They got KFC. They must have Pizza Hut. But um, yeah, I don't know about the breadsticks yet. Well, to be fair, the NFL <laughs> fans haven't won their breadsticks yet either. So still waiting for that boop or that Matt Five very, uh, on the very way. Very different hope. franchises to just be like, well, if there's a KFC, then clearly this this must be there. One cannot exist without the other. <laughs> Yeah, pizza and chicken. What's the problem? No, it's because like those. I I don't. I'm not gonna get into the full story, but those two franchises are like kind of linked in this in, in my part of the world. They're like linked to one uh, parent thing. It's it's complicated. It's not really. I just don't want to talk about it too much. But <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought of it. Then I, I remember. You know what? Maybe the rest of the world doesn't work like that. So there is. Maybe now it's I've, slightly now different. I've, uh, <laughs> You know, I've been reminded of how worldly everything is. So there, that we found out, and it's so worldly that we have Titans fans live in the Hangzhou homestand, which you know shouldn't be yeah. a huge surprise. I expect a lot of Overwatch fans from various teams should be there. But uh, it was, yeah, it's a moment. And actually, one one other thing as well, I remember seeing when we I saw some crowd shots during the last match as well. We had someone wearing the season one, season two Shanghai jersey. I'm like, that's mm. the real fan. That's the diehard Shanghai yeah. fan right there. Because they know pain. They went through the season one and season two pain, especially that season one pain of the 040 and 042 subsequently as well. So, you know, now they get to experience Shanghai winning or we'll see in, in a few short moments if that continues or not because we've had one major upset today already. I think it's fair to say that NYXL getting the win was definitely an upset. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no other There's no other way to cut it. Uh, you know, it's... It was just a, a crazy David and Goliath victory there for the side of the NYXL. They found the sling and they nailed the shot and they just took him down. So it was really crazy to see. I mean, you and I were obviously, you know, watching the game, talking to each other throughout it. And we were just kind of losing our minds watching the series <laughs> unfold uh, and, and seeing, yeah, the spark getting uh, full held there at that point A on Toronto right at the end. It's like, oh, my God, they're actually going to do it. NYXL finally have have found a bit of their groove and uh, Hangzhou as well. Didn't look great. You have to int- you have to expect or, or, or kind of interpret that it may have very well been the pressure of performing in front of a live audience with this incredibly uh, important series. You know, to be able to go into your first tournament. There's only a few throughout the year, so missing out on now two is really damning when it comes down to your your end of season standings. You want to go as far as you possibly can, be as dominant as you can. So. While the you know the score that they got throughout June up into this event is going to be good, having that 4-0, that is going to be good for them in the long run. It's still not going to be great to not be able to compete against the North American squads. Especially when this was meant to be the run. This is the this is the 4-0 yeah. run. You're the only undefeated team in all of APAC. Everyone's been saying you're the best team in APAC for a while. Everyone's pretty pretty much agreed on that and also have agreed upon the fact that NYXL have been looking shaky. They've been there, but also they've been missing out. They've been kind of, you know, not quite. But uh, two teams that definitely have not as you start to see the clappers going through. Yep, you know what it means. It means Shanghai taking the stage. They are live in the venue, live at the Hangzhou Spark homestand. Yep, there it is. That's the roster. Shanghai Dragons, the most, well, historically in the past couple of years, the past year and a half, Historically, most dominant team in the APEC region for a while, being only bested by the Seoul Dynasty last year, leaked into the season as we head into the grand finals. I'll see what they can get done. I mean, none of these players are, you know, they're all very well used to playing in front of live audiences. So this is not going to be a new experience at all. Should not have to worry about any kind of stage jitters. Yes, they are going to be the last hope for you know China for Chinese owned organizations to try to make it into the June Joust. But um, I think that they're gonna be able to shake that off. Everybody here on they this have roster has been competing for a very long time. Yeah, they are all veterans, they are all very yeah. well seasoned, so uh, I don't Even expect that the subs? pressure is gonna get to them too much. Yeah, oh, everybody on this lineup. You know, uh, Moon knows how to pick them. He's like, oh yeah, you played for this long? Okay, you're gonna be good. <laughs> Let me grab you. So. Moon uh, is yeah. like, um, I mean, it starts setting across the board. You don't Moon. have to worry about these guys choking on stage. Yeah, I describe Moon as like, he's like the Christopher Nolan of Overwatch League coaches. He only works with people he's worked before with. You know, he has this kind of ensemble cast that of all the kind of actors he's already hired before mm. and cast in previous movies. So <laughs> that's kind of how this works for the Shanghai Dragons. They take the Chris Nolan approach and, you know, epic games, epic movies, what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> as, yeah, <laughs> he's got his cast. Just yeah. Figure out which one of these guys is uh, is the Leo DiCaprio of the team. 
I mean, hey, and it's 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 it is in keeping because uh, every now and then you have a, you have uh, several hits, and then sometimes you have a miss. I mean, Shanghai Dragons they have <laughs> you know they have flopped. They weren't able to make it into the grand final last year. Um, so that's kind of like the I don't know the Dark Knight Rises of of their performances, I suppose. Where it was like it was still it was like okay. It was you know. You didn't, you didn't like regret watching it, but it also could have been way better. <laughs> it wasn't the Dark Knight. It's not what you were expecting when you went into the theater. So it does happen. But uh, that's that's a that's a pretty decent analogy, I suppose. We'll see what happens here. We'll see which uh, Christopher Nolan Thanks, film we get from this Shanghai performance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a tenant, and just this this series this is going to be wild, and we won't understand it very well. But Dynasty on the other side is like it's a it's a wild mixture of like super veterans from season one including overwatch league champions and then rookies as well um and just kind of everything across the board so they've they've definitely got a few things going on for them um funny but a uh, thing here as well is that i don't think moon was part of this team but marvel was part of the old lucky future zenith roster that also included dm and ursa who have recently left the shanghai dragon so there's a bit of cross pollination there in terms of who's gone where and who's played with who uh, so we're not going to be seeing Marvel or Demon or Ursa, I guess. Uh, Would have been nice to have Demon Ursa maybe at the home stand. I'm not too yeah. sure if they are there or not. I assume probably not, but I'm sure the rest of the players are there, including Molly, who is a Chinese player who would love to be, you know, meeting up with the fans. And I'm sure they have plenty of time to do that before and afterwards. But right now, about to head into map number one, Li Jung Tower of the Eastern Division knockouts. Here, Seoul versus Shanghai Dragons. The winner goes on through the June Joust tournament. The loser will be eliminated. We'll have to wait until next stage. Yeah, that is a long wait. You don't want to have to just be sitting there at home, you know, just practicing, but not for a series that's up and coming. Teleporter's out. Straight out the gate. We're going to have Fleta over on the Soldier 76. So double hit scan here for the side of the Shanghai Dragons. We'll see Fitz sticking with the Symmetra. So it wasn't just going for the TP boost. He wants to try to burn them down. That's going to be good because you can get that left click charge. Get that damage amped up off of the Orisa barrier. Let's see how they... Oh, oh there it there goes. No way. Okay, well, DJ it's a tragedy. Up fight. That's like the main yep. DP is gone. Yep, instantly is just eliminated. And this could just very well be a calling now. And that's exactly what it's looking like. The barriers are not going to be able to survive. Provident, the ice block there on the point. Yep, just will get picked off. It is a team kill effectively. And Fitz just says, okay, yeah, I'll just go for the McCree. Absolutely. I mean, at this, at this stage, you don't want to be retaking with the Symmetra, especially not in this situation where Shanghai Dragons know it as well. They're going to get aggressive, try and get some, you know, a good tickle damage in there, some good, uh, you know, with Flatter on the Soldier specifically, where previously, I think Sol have also played a decent amount of Soldier. We did oh, see that. No. That's going to open up with the Prophet and already an opening frag that makes things so much more difficult for Sol. And they're just locked up. They can't move anywhere. Yeah, they're trying to hold them back in. Immortality Field now going to be used. Void pressing forward, manages to clean up too. And they are right outside the dropship. Fitz with no chance to escape will get picked off. And I was about to bring this up right as Prophet did get picked off. And looking like maybe it's going to happen again. Let's go into the ice block to stay safe. But there's not a lot of shield pressure here for the side of the Soul Dynasty. Like, granted, you have Gesture there. He can just continue to hold down that left click. You've got Fitz. But the May is not going to be doing a whole lot when it comes down to breaking through this double barrier. No, they need to either do this, rotate around the map, and go towards the point. That's a nice halt that stops the board. Oh my god, again. he plays on the back of the halt. This time he finds two. Gesture apparently just not able to go cold in there. Dude. Gets knocked off the side. This is catastrophic for the Soul Dynasty, but everything is going wonderfully for Shanghai. The coordination between Fate and Lee Jae Gon is just on another level right now. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. I was going to say, you either didn't want to rotate with the walls or trying to engage my isolating a player off of likely uh, fate here, but nothing's working out for them. They're getting booped off, they're getting spawn cap. Here we go, maybe they can get fate. The flux, that maybe is so not. meaty, that's yeah. such a huge flux. They have all oh, the attack fires are rolling as well, so Fitz gets sniped out of the sky. It is another team kill. 90% about to be on the board way. for Shanghai Dragons, and this is not even close. We're going to see a replay. I don't really want to see this right now, but it's okay. It's a huge boop. Take me back to the game real quick so I can see what's going on, because it was at 90%. There we go, 97. Jester's on the side of the map. Flutter taking him out, gets the finish. The sound barrier looking like it was a solo use onto Anamo, as 2U was only able to find one. Sound barrier now out. Blizzard coming through to help try to survive. 
Prophet does have the immortality field, but it does not last very long at all. Jester re-arrives, rolls back through to you. Knocked up into the air, finished off. It's gonna be gone, Prophet dead. No DPS available here for the side of the Soul Dynasty. And it is just an absolute slaughter at the hands of the Shanghai Dragons. 100% to zero to kick off this map. Absolute shellacking, that's how you gotta describe that one. Shanghai lit nothing through their fingers. Salt Dynasty couldn't even, you know, I was gonna say, couldn't even really touch the point. They got to the point with Symmetra TPs and some good rotations using their May, but every fight just went the way of Shanghai Dragons and it wasn't close. Multiple team kills, as you said. Boops to get the thing started. I mean, look, if we're talking about bridge six here, EJ gone just gave everyone bridge sticks. If this was the Titans, it's Shanghai Dragons and well, I mean, it'd be too easy. You'd have to make some really hard goals to achieve if it was to, we're talking about uh, giving out rewards for Shanghai Dragons getting boop kills, because that was just completely opened things up and closed the door in Soul Dynasty. And then on top of that, avoiding a huge flux. Finally, Soul in that last fight, get their ultimates on board and you know, can't save Jisha with the sound barrier. Ultimates aren't making the huge impact. Prophet is still on the May here. I'm starting to believe this May is gonna be more of a detriment the team didn't help. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much damage being pushed up from the side of the Shanghai Dragons, and Prophet, he needs to get in on top of people, and he just has not been able to have that happen yet. But we'll find one. The freeze does come down on the lip for a moment as Lee Jagon finds another boom. He sends fits off the side Dude, of the map. Lee Jagon is absolutely popping off, and this is terrifying. There's another oh one. God. Somebody has to control this guy. You need to have some double hit scan to control Lee Jagon. You're never going to catch him with a May. You cannot freeze this guy, and you need to take him out of the fight. If he continues to do stuff like this, there is oh, no go for hope one. for the Dynasty. Of course he's going to go yeah, for another he one. Could. He's Lee Jagon. Gotta, he doesn't give it I up. i got to be honest with you. We, we talked about that one Titans fan in the audience. They're wishing right now, like, dude, we just need our team to do the same thing. Oh my so god, this Jagon be... He's going to go for it. Oh. That would be really good. Yep. Oh, yep. Uh, yep. 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 Yes. Yep. Yep. Holy. Okay. Okay, congratulations, you have finally killed Lee Jae Gon, but he takes out two. Kratom and two, you are out of the fight. Fitz will find Izzy Yonki, so now there's no Baptiste for either side. It is going to be a 4v4, at least for the moment, but you can see they just cannot push forward right now. They're trying to advance steadily, but Flutter, he's nearly got this ult online. The Elite Rockets go through, Lip just looking to zone people back, keep them on the opposite side and try to alleviate some pressure here for Void. Has to roll out of the Blizzard, however, but now here comes the Tac Pfizer. Prophet instantly going to be gone. Gesture dead as well, so there's one less barrier to stand behind. But it is kiting out around the side, gets in behind that Ant Matrix, now presses forward, looks for the finish, and they will have it. This is not even close. <laughs> Void agrees, he nods. I mean, they just walk into the end matrix, they don't even care. Grim drops the window down. They smash through that window. They burgle the Soul Dynasty. And the Blizzard came on. It was decent. It covers a lot of players. It Profit. even gets Void, but they don't kill Void. And Void gets out Profit, with a mortality please. field. I, sorry, not to I'm just I'm, I'm molding because he is still on the main. He's still on well, this. At least they don't use the Blizzard. This time. I, okay, oh, good. <laughs> one, the one thing that's gone well, one which made it stick. into the room. Now they have to make it up here onto the point. The Hulk pulls them all to the side. He gets two more! Are you kidding the me? How, how many? are they letting how this many happen? Is that? That's, there's another one. There's another one. Legion, give him, give him the MVP. End it. End the series. It's over. He's the player of the I match. have the number. I have the number for you. It's 10. He's got 10 environmental kills over this map so far. If, look, I'm going to be honest. If, if this was the same sponsorship that Titans have, that has to be the most. Pizza would be shaking the hands right now. I was like, we, we don't have enough bridge sticks in the country. You've you completely just... cleaned our stocks out. This is too many. This we we wanted one, one environmental kill. Ten is like that's we're gonna have to call in the United States back us up with some more bridge sticks. We don't have enough flour for this. Lee, Lee Jagon would bankrupt Pizza Hut uh, at this point. But I mean, <laughs> I can't believe it. This is unreal. And then uh, I, Dynasty sticking with the May the whole time. Is this just going to be? the gesture syndrome with Roadhog, but Profit on mate. Like, obviously, I don't expect them to <laughs> run it as we go into other map types, but come on. You use the Blizzard, you got no value. Swap to something. Try to have some additional control because you, you're not getting on top of people, yeah. so at least try to pick them off at long, you know, medium to long range. Do something different. Yeah, it just looked like to me the the whole game plan was to try and find engagements with the Mei in this mirror, whereas Shanghai Dragon's entire game plan was play distance, have a double hit scan, have way more anti-shield pressure, which is what Flare on the Soldier is going to give you. Um, and unless Proffer can pop off and just get people, you know, locked up with ice walls, you're not going to win. Even the Blizzard wasn't working, so I agree with you. that This Mei was not good for the team at all, and it showed. And then on top of that, yeah. Lee Jigong gets 10 kills, so 10 boops, yeah, you'll take just... that. 
just watch the replay of his, his last three boops. He almost had three on the initial, uh, but Jester didn't get knocked off the side, and then he ended up getting him anyway. But good God, what a start to the series here. I mean, Temple of Anubis is going to be the second map, so uh, that's an, a direct nerf to Shanghai Dragons because there's nowhere for Li Jigong to, to boop people off, off the side of the map. Um, so that's a good thing going for the Soul Dynasty at the moment. But... Aside from that, I mean, it just wasn't even close. What a way to kick off this series. Shanghai Dragons looking like they are here to win. We'll see if the Dynasty can try to level out their play, bounce back, and put a win on the board when we return from the break. So do not go anywhere. Map 2 coming at you in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Indeed, we help people get jobs. 